Hi there folks, welcome back to Rich Reviews, and it's my second Amazon Prime review that I want to read for you guys here now. And this is a film called The Vast of Night. This is the directorial de debut of Andrew Patterson, and this film apparently has a 93% rating on Rotten Tomatoes, and this is currently being shown in a handful of drive-in theaters that are currently operating here in the U.S. And let me confess, would I absolutely pay to see this film in a drive-in? No, but I'm happy that I saw this film nonetheless. The central conceit here is this is a frame within a frame story. You know, it's, the central premise is that, oh yeah, this town in Cayuga, New Mexico is experiencing things. I want to bet quite near Roswell, New Mexico. But the overall thing is this is an episode of Paradox Theater which is basically a homage to the Twilight Zone right down to the narrator sounding a whole lot like Rod Sterling. Is a, there's a local basketball team that has just begun playing and everyone in the town is ready to see their team go up against the other team. There are two people that are not currently watching the game right now. One happens to be Faye Crockett played by a girl who is a whole bunch of Disney Channel stuff and a couple of other things I haven't heard of. She makes a big leap here in acting ability-wise, and let me confess, there are worse Disney Channel stars to come out of the Disney Channel mill as of late. Also, DJ Everett working at a radio station. Faye, you know, comes into the station. She gets a call, doesn't necessarily know what to do with it. Then she begins to hear a noise. She contacts Everett, and basically he puts that noise over her waves, to be exact. And that leads them to a call from an old man who says, I know what exactly what this is, but it, we are given that thing in pieces. Obviously the best material about this is between the banter between Faye and Everett, particularly the material knowing that one day we would definitely get electric hybrid cars, cellular phones, and although the tube chute is still years off, it brings a smile to your face. Now again, let me confess, I think I smiled knowingly at this material, but at the same time I don't feel like I really learned anything new from this material. There's a very one very interesting tracking shot that goes from telephone plays to the basketball game and back to the radio station that's an interesting take and I appreciate to see that one long take. More interesting things that this director decides to do is at times go completely black and have you know the dialogue and maybe that's the hands the suspense of the dialogue. Now maybe one or two times that would be interesting but they, they do that couple more times and I think that really doesn't do much for me. A couple of times the director is like, oh yeah, I'm going to go pull back and you're going to learn, oh yes, you're still watching the show. It, that might be interesting one time. You do it a couple different times. And it's like, okay, I get the point. You're, I'm watching the Paradox Theater. And then of course, we eventually stumble upon an older woman who has been in this town for a very long time. People call her the shut-in, the crazy loon old lady. She tells a story of how about how her son ran off when he was nine years old during the same incidents of lights or strange sounds coming out from the desert. He hasn't seen she hasn't seen her son since then, and they basically accuse her of probably murdering her child. Obviously, these kids for a very long time suspected it probably could be the Soviets. Then they sort of come to realize, oh yeah, it could be aliens. Confess, I think this would make a very interesting two-part episode of the Twilight Zone show. You know, Jordan Peele is doing that series now. This would make a great home for it. And, but of course, alas, this is a full-length feature film. Try to noble up the material of aliens with a Close Encounters of the Third Kind vibe. Obviously this is the post 90s now where you know X-Files be on the rage and how every generation has a nostalgic feel considering that you know Stranger Things is doing that for the 80s. Back to my mom watched Twilight Zone and Night Gallery and Our Limits all her life. You know granted this first thing in the 80s the 50s would be nostalgic 
Again, this is a nice film to watch. If you feel like you need to go see this in a drive-in, go ahead. So in the end, folks, what I'm going to say about The Vast of Night, basically enough, I'm going to give this a mandate rating because, quite frankly, there's not a whole lot of stuff out there that I can equally recommend. This one, this thing I can't recommend, even though I do have certain problems with it. So, folks, The Vast of Night, have you seen this? What did you think? Please put everything in the comment box below here, folks. As always, folks, like, comment, subscribe. Enrich yourself with knowledge. I'm on Twitter at MichaelRichardReviews2. I'll see you next time, folks. Yes, hooray.